Oh, howdy all, grab yourself a drink. It is time for some Path of Exile discussion. Welcome to day six of Teaser Season for patch 3.22 and the Trials of the Ancestors expansion. If you missed yesterday, yesterday was patch notes day, so there is a huge amount of discussion, and I'll put a link to that at the end of this video. But I wanted to start with a correction to that video. I said in that video that I thought five-way domain of timeless conflict services might be completely killed off by the new patch. And having reviewed this and having discussed it with a few more people, I think that was probably a bit wrong. It looks like Domain of Timeless Conflict services are going to be nerfed by only 56%. And while this is significant, Legion Fireways was so fundamentally broken that they were still probably going to be competitive with other XP as an item things. Things like Chael of Breachstone, Synthesis Unique Maps with 100% increased XP, or things that are a bit harder to trade like Untainted Paradise and Betrayal Safe Houses. Untainted Paradise probably takes over as the single best XP a minute in the game, unless there's something in the Ancestors expansion content. There's a number of other things that are competitive, like safe houses. Five ways, however, probably remain the thing that people can bank up the most of. And so the extremely engaging gameplay of sitting there looking at your Atlas screen, because if you take your Atlas off, you end up probably crashing the PC because of all the particle effects on screen. This is likely still to remain a part of the game. The first teaser that was put out today was a video showing of Guardian's Blessing in action. This really doesn't show very much that's useful. This video just simply showcases a player running around with a minion, turning on an aura, and the aura is projected from the minion instead of from the player. While the aura is projected from the minion, the minion's taking physical damage over time. The only real piece of new news, because we already knew from the patch notes what Guardian's Blessing did, is that at some gem level and some configuration, whatever this player is set up for, it's going to kill the minion in approximately five seconds. But we don't know whether this is a best case scenario or a worst case scenario for Guardian's Blessing. We don't know how much regeneration that minion has, if any. We don't know how much it's able to mitigate physical damage over time. And as a result, we can't really tell much from this. I'll put a link to the GGG video down below, but like I say, there's not much in it. The next change is a quality of life improvement. This is one of those tiny things that actually is going to be a moderate improvement for Trade League players even though it looks like one of the tiniest things in the world. If you're someone who does a lot of trading, and particularly if you buy divination cards at League Start, which is something that I almost always do, the one thing that'll often go wrong is that someone you'll send a message to saying, hey, I wanna buy your sacrifice divination card for 24 chaos. They'll be AFK when you send that. Then 45 seconds later, they send you a group invite when you're not expecting it. The thing is, at that point, you've just joined someone else's hideout because you're buying another sacrifice card from them. And so while you're waiting for a trade invite from the person that's in your party, you get a group invite that looks exactly the same. Well, now that group invite won't look exactly the same. The trade invite will have a golden balance scale. The group invite will be blue. And there's a couple of other corner cases where this comes up as well with much less common invites, guild invites, hideout invites, and PVP challenge invites. So all of these are going to look different at a glance. Like I say, the main benefit here is for people who trade a lot early league, particularly if you buy a lot of indistinguishable items from different players and you actually want them in somewhat bulk. Finally, we get to the thing that helps you plan your characters for 322, and that is that poeplanner.com is now updated with the new Atlas. At the time I am recording this video, Path of Building, the program is not, but I expect it probably will be pretty soon. So this site will allow you to explore all of the little changes and also will allow you to verify that certain interactions that you might have been thinking about still work. One that is particularly of interest to me is the Red Nightmare in this particular basic jewel socket. It is still going to catch 10 strength nodes. And then those 10 strength nodes can theoretically be transformed into 8% fire resist nodes instead using Tattoo of the Namahu Firewalker. Who knows how rare that item's going to be. This may not be a safe leak start idea, but that's going to make the Red Nightmare extremely good, especially because there's also a very good node that happens to have fire resist there as well. So that interaction does still work. That's now been verified on the 322 tree. And there's a couple of other things you can look at as well, such as the changes to Magmatic Strikes. Magmatic Strikes is interesting. When I saw this in the patch notes, I was pretty negative about it. The more I think about it though, the more I think this is actually a slight buff. And that's because this is an Ignite Cluster. This is an area of the passive tree you're going to be in if you're igniting. And where Old Magmatic Strikes added 10% of physical damage as extra fire consistently, this wasn't really an Ignite node but the new version of Magmatic Strikes is actually quite a bit better than old Magmatic Strikes on an Ignite build because you might get more than four seconds of use out of it every 10 seconds. To illustrate this, and I think that this is a fairly favorable situation, so in real world it might be a little bit less powerful than this, if you were to imagine you've got a three second Ignite duration 
and you hit with magmatic strikes exactly at the start of your four second window, then again exactly three seconds into that four second window. You're actually going to get the benefits of this more intense ignite for six seconds out of the 10, not just for four. That's the benefit of having these pendulum nodes on an ignite build. Whilst I don't like the way that these pendulum nodes play, I'm not going to argue with the power that you get here. Additionally, if you take this node or similar effects, it is going to make Swift Affliction a worse support gem for you, and it is also going to make the 3.22 support gem that reduces Ignite duration to be worse as well. So keep that in mind. The other big thing with PoE Planner is that their Atlas Planner has also been updated, so you can start planning your Atlas for patch 3.22 as well, if you've got some sorts of ideas that you want to see how viable they are, and how many travel points are involved, or even if you just want to check out where the new clusters are. One thing of particular note, you'll see the Shaping the World cluster is in a fairly good spot, but it's also not a very rush friendly spot. So having had a quick look at this change to the Atlas, it looks like it's going to be a slightly less rush friendly Atlas than the last one. I think you'll have more and better options by the time you have 120 or more Atlas passive points than you do in 321, but you will have fewer and worse options at the time that you have 50 Atlas passive points than you did in 3.21. That's my first thoughts on this, although I do want to play around with it and experiment with a couple of different possible Atlas setups before I say that for sure. Anyways, that's today's news. May your Valorbs have interesting results and I will see you around.